In this episode, Unreported World goes deep into the Amazon jungle to investigate the murky world of wildlife trafficking. South American crocodiles, monkeys and even big cats are highly prized as exotic pets, but many are also endangered. Adia Depitan is in Peru to track down the criminal networks trafficking tens of thousands of animals every year. <laughs> The Amazon rainforest is the most important ecosystem on the planet. It's home to a third of the world's animal species, but the United Nations says the situation for its wildlife is now critical. I'm heading to Iquitos, which is in the Amazon basin, and that's because I've been told that this is the epicenter when it comes to smuggling wildlife. And it's easy to see why, because when I look around this river, you know, this forest is just teeming with life, and it's a maze of waterways at which you could smuggle anything through, and nobody would have a clue. Every year, thousands of animals are captured illegally from the rainforest and trafficked through the remote frontier town of Iquitos, and on to a global market in exotic pets. In this part of Peru, many regard animals from the rainforest as commodities. It's illegal to capture and sell these wild animals without a permit, but all sorts of species, even endangered ones, are openly sold for food. So I'm getting my first flavor of a market here. And straight away, I spotted some bush meat. There's a crocodile over there, blatantly on display. Look at that. Disculpen, ¿qué es esto? So this is the tail of the caiman. So it's bush meat all around me. But there's a much more lucrative trade, wildlife trafficking. After a few simple inquiries, we're told about a woman who runs a stall selling bush meat, but who also offers live animals for the exotic pet trade. We've set up a meeting with a market trader. We can't film her openly with the camera because there might be some hostility from the other market traders and her as well. So I'm wearing a hidden camera. <laughs> We've come to meet a woman known locally as Signora Natty. She arrives and asks us to follow her to her home nearby. ¿Qué tal? Bien. Bien. I tell her I'm looking to buy exotic animals for my private collection, but I need to check first they'll survive the colder climate in the UK. So we say we need video of the animals to send to an expert. That backs up what I film on my secret camera. I have no idea what to expect. It's a snake. Wow. What type of snake is this? It's a rainbow snake. Wow. That's a tortoise. Wow. These are all protected animals. How big does this grow? This one? These are caiman. They grow up to two meters long and they're under threat of becoming endangered. The animals on offer are illegal to sell without a permit. Lifting the lid of a wheelie bin, she reveals even more. Wow, what are these called? Oh, that's a crocodile in there. How many in there? Quantos? How much? Quanto uh cuesta? -huh. Quanto? Hundred soles each. Hundred soles each. That's twenty-five pounds for my very own caiman. And Signora Natty isn't finished yet. She brings out a box full of baby monkeys. Oh, muchas gracias. What, what's the name? They're tamarins, 
highly prized as an exotic pet, also under threat of becoming endangered. How many of these do you have? She also has a pygmy marmoset, the smallest monkey in the world. Oh, wow. Yeah, why, why has it got this, um, the lead, the wire? Dice que por qué tiene ese cable que si no le duele. No, es porque no se larga. Este ah. de aquí. Sí, hay un mono así que también yeah. ve. ¿Lo tienes acá? You have a bigger monkey? Sí, mencionaste un mono más grande. Que lo Ay, ya, me voy a traer. Ya, dale, dale. Pero, sí, es policías hay que tener miedo. Sí, 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 sí. sí. sí es policías policía. nos quitan. So, is it legal for you to have that? No? Este, este aquí se trabaja todo secreto. So, to take them back to the UK? What do I need to do? No. What's the best way? Todo, todo, esos, esos monitos chiquitos se va a la farmacia y se compra pastillita. Y ahí... Eso se le convida la mitad para que duerma. ¿Mitad? La mitad. ¿Y no se morirá? No muere. ¿Y, y a dónde lo mete él? O sea, ¿a dónde lo esconde? Eh, aparte tiene que ir a una, toda una cajita. ¿Una cajita? ¿Como de zapatos así? Como zapatos así. Natty suggests we drug the monkeys with sleeping pills. She also claims there's another way of getting the animals out of the country. ¿Y papeles no se pueden conseguir? Papeles solamente para que vayan a sacar, cuesta caro. ¿Pero se puede? Sí, pues con papeles pueden llevar. ¿Y cómo se saca? Se va ahí a la comisaría, ahí se van a sacar los papeles. ¿Pero cómo? ¿Que hay que darle...? Plata, pues, ya, ¿Pero tienes algún contacto allá? No. She seems to be saying we can bribe the authorities. Natty has promised to show me a large monkey, but in fact, it's a kinkajou, an animal related to the raccoon. They start pressuring us for cash. It's time for us to go. Gracias, gracias. That was so intense. I've never seen anything like it. And that woman was selling animals like they were pieces of fruit. Those animals were absolutely petrified. The monkeys, when she was pulling them apart, they were screaming and I could see in their eyes they were terrified. It, it was just so bizarre. I meet up with Noga Shani, a primatologist, to see if she can help me get my head around what I saw at Signora Natty's house. I mean, can you yeah. have a look? They're all juveniles. You know, the noises they're making, are they distressed sounds? This is screaming, basically screaming. They're really afraid. Every time that she pulls them, they just want to, to hold something. All these animals, like all the monkeys, the only way to get them, they must shoot their mother. It's estimated that for every baby primate that's taken from the wild, half a dozen more are killed in the process. 30,000 primates die in this way every year. They fall down and about half of them die in the fall or from the bullet. So they have to kill another mother and another mother. When you see this type of trafficking on this scale, then, mm -hmm. what goes through your mind? The main thing I feel is that she needs to go to jail. No, she, it needs to stop. Noga's also a wildlife activist who specializes in exposing illegal traffickers. That night, she reports our findings to the environmental prosecutor, who agrees to act. She also calls Signora Natty, pretending to be a foreign buyer, and sets up a meeting in two days' time when the police will be ready to carry out a sting operation. Noga wants me to see some of the victims of the illegal pet trade. So we visit a sanctuary where animals that she rescued in the past have been sent. Okay. Just up Look at that. It's checking me out. This monkey is one of the monkeys I brought. In Spanish, this is uh, a tigrillo or an ocelot. Yeah. 
Yes. So where did you find this Tigrillo? One day the authorities, they called me that they confiscated six animals. And all of these animals were in the most horrible conditions. He had four or five fractures in his bones. He couldn't even walk one step. He's trying to take my wheels. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I'm being groomed by a monkey. Oh, my days. <laughs> <laughs> Pilpin Tawasi Wildlife Refuge is run by Gudrun Spera. Every animal here was rescued from either traffickers or people who kept them illegally as pets. So how big a problem is it, poaching of, of animals and monkeys especially? All Peruvian monkeys, all the species in Peru are already vulnerable. They should be protected. And it's part, partly to poaching, but people always used to hunt monkey for food. Now the big problem is the hunting for a pet trade. Mm. Because that means, even my workers tell me there are people coming to the hunters in the village and telling them, you know, when you go hunting, try to kill a mother. You eat the mother and you sell me the baby. So who buys these monkeys? People who have money and no brain. And sometimes also people said, who think they're rescuing them by buying them at the market. I'm going to buy it to save it, but by paying for the animal, they actually have created a market that didn't even exist 20 years ago. Well-meaning tourists are making matters worse. But there's a major international trade in exotic wildlife. The UN claims it's the fourth biggest illegal industry in the world. Despite seizing around 4,000 animals a year, Noga says the Peruvian authorities have never put a single trafficker behind bars. She believes it's because wildlife is low on the political agenda. If nothing is done and the poaching continues at the rate that it's going, what's going to happen in Peru? Um, we are in big shit, basically. <laughs> there's no, there's not much hope. I but a few species will be gone yeah, yeah, yeah. in the no, next there's 10 no years. Question. There's if no it's question. going like this. Whoa! Just leapt from nowhere. <laughs> that was mad. <laughs> It's bad enough to think of species being lost from the Amazon rainforest, but because the ecosystem is so fragile, it could have devastating effects. Fuerte! It's a beautiful place. It still makes me sad to think that all of those animals, all the trauma they've been through, but at least they get some peace for a little part of their lives here. We head back to Iquitos with Noga. She's working with the police to prepare tomorrow's sting operation on the wildlife trafficker we secretly filmed. Shortly after dawn, we meet at a cheap hotel in Iquitos. Noga is posing as a buyer, waiting to meet Signora Natty. A woman's coming here hoping to sell animals, but what she doesn't know is that there'll be plainclothes police people waiting to arrest her for wildlife trafficking. Uh, what Loga's doing is pretty dangerous, because although she's in the room next door to us, momentarily she's going to be on her own with this lady, and anything could happen. If all goes to plan, armed undercover police will make the arrest. Liz Macedo Davida is the prosecutor who will build the case. Okay, it's not long now. The operation is about to start. What's really crucial is that this woman is seen receiving money for these animals because if she is, then her crime goes up from handling to selling. Noga's fight against animal traffickers means that some of them know her. She decides to cover her distinctive curly hair with a towel. Next door, she places a hidden camera in her room to try and capture the moment when Signora Natty accepts the money, if she turns up. One of the other officers is in contact with a spotter outside the hotel.
This is a pretty heavy moment because the woman's arrived and she's with Noga right now, and we're just waiting for the go-ahead to, to go in there. The commanding officer arrives. He'll lead the operation. We can actually hear the monkeys that um, the woman's trying to sell. The deal's been done. Now we just have to wait for Noga's call. <laughs> Can you come? Can we ready? Okay. Okay, it's time for action. Here we go, here we go. Go, go. Well, there's animals everywhere. The monkeys, there's some lizards on the floor. As Senor Anati is taken to the prosecutor's office, Noga takes a closer look at the animals. How old do you think this one is? It's less than a month old. Less. He's really thirsty. Wow, he's drinking so hard. It's just heartbreaking to think that this poor little monkey, less than a month old, was stored in a box in its own blood and its own feces. It's been taken away from its parents. It's traumatised, look at it. The rescued animals are rushed across town to a vet for health checks. The operation is an operation. Ayúdame, Marlo. Igual es bien bebito. Bien bebito. Necesita vitaminas. Tiene úlcera en el ojo. One of the tamarins is in a critical condition. Yeah, this monkey has been tied up uh, to stop it from escaping, but they've had to take the, the, the tying away from it because it's scarring it. In all, Noga's rescued 20 animals from nine different species, including the monkeys, iguanas, caimans, turtles, parrots, and agoutis. Now, Noga's going back to the prosecutor's office because she's going to try and build a, a case against this woman who tried to sell her the animals. And then the animals are going to be sent to a sanctuary and we're going to try and catch up with them there. But all in all, it's been a really emotional day. So dramatic. <laughs> It's my last day in Iquitos, and while the prosecution builds the case against Signora Natti, I catch up with the lead environmental prosecutor for the region, 
Pablo Ormeño Quiroz. Why are you relying on evidence and information brought by people like Noga? Why isn't your office doing and gathering this information themselves? Eh, debemos recordar que Iquitos es una ciudad pequeña, digámoslo así, una isla, lugar donde comúnmente casi todas las personas se conocen. Comúnmente conocen quiénes son las autoridades, quiénes son los efectivos policiales. Y ha sucedido en ocasiones anteriores que personal policial, eh, representantes del Ministerio Público, han, hecho, han realizado intervenciones. Y lo que sucede es que la gente se aglomera y rodean al personal policial. Todos estos comerciantes, pues a la hora de una intervención, eh, se coluden para atentar contra la integridad física. También existe el tema de, la, de, las, de informantes, que eso un poco complica que cuando uno organiza un operativo inopinado, estas personas ya tengan previamente el conocimiento. It was suggested to us by a trafficker that we spoke to that it was possible to buy a permit to take illegally trafficked and endangered animals on aeroplanes from corrupt police officer. Creo que sucede acá y sucede en todo el mundo. Siempre a veces eh, existen malos elementos, eh, tanto a nivel de la policía como en las entidades del gobierno regional, que permiten realizar este tipo de permisos. Eh, ilegales en el fondo. So you do agree that there is corruption in your system which is preventing you from stopping illegal wildlife trafficking. Si sí, ocurre un, una corrupción al interior de, de las diferentes instituciones comprometidas en la lucha contra estas actividades ilícitas. Before we head off, I want to see how the rescued animals are getting on. They're being held in quarantine at the Pil Pintuasi Rescue Center. How are they doing then? How is she physically? And she is definitely already better. She's strong. She holds on very well. And she is very hungry. It's hard to ask this, but how close to death these animals were, you know, if they hadn't been rescued? A few days at the most, I think. It feels like there's so many animals that are being trafficked that it's kind of an uphill battle for you guys. So, I mean, how much satisfaction do you get out of saving individual animals? Every baby like this is, uh, you know, important to save. And every person that goes to jail or being, you know, threatened seriously of going to jail understands and then there's less. I don't think we're winning, but we're doing something. Senoras. Senoras. Oh, yeah. Vamos. Vamos, señoras, vamos. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on. There's nothing inside. Senora Natty, the woman we helped to catch, was convicted of wildlife trafficking and given the maximum sentence available. She walked free with a suspended sentence and a 570 pounds fine. No animal traffickers in Peru have ever been imprisoned. For the moment, the Peruvian authorities are offering almost no protection to the country's invaluable wildlife.